Welcome to our service for Christian Aid Week. Even though we know we cannot share fellowship together in person, we're pleased that we're able to join together in worship online. And we know that Jesus promised that where two or three people gather in his name, he will be with us. During our time together today, we will have space to read and listen, sing and pray, and remember and acknowledge that we are part of a global community. We live in an increasingly interconnected way. Our local community is global. And coronavirus has shown us that our futures are bound together more tightly than ever before. People living in poverty are already facing a lack of food, water and healthcare. People in developing countries with already fragile healthcare systems will be even harder hit, making our work, the work that we do, more vital than ever before. This will undoubtedly be a very different Christian Aid Week. But we know that supporters like you will continue to ensure that it will be the same life-changing and joyful event that it has been since 1957. Please join us today in prayer and action for our neighbours near and far. And with your continued support, we will continue to be able to do the work that we do with the poorest and most vulnerable communities in the world. Let us open our service today with prayer. God of all the earth, be present with us now. In each of our homes, as we connect together. Build us into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer and Healer. Amen.
God of heaven and earth, in these times of isolation, apart from loved ones, distant from friends, away from neighbours, thank you that there is nothing in all of creation, not even coronavirus, that is able to separate us from your love. And may your love that never fails continue to be shared through the kindness of strangers looking out for each other, for neighbours near and far recognising our shared vulnerability, grateful for every breath and willing all to know the gift of a full and healthy life. Loving God, we seek your presence, looking to you for comfort, strength, protection and reassurance. Holding on to hope, trusting with faith that you are still God in the midst of the turmoil and that your love reaches to the ends of the earth. Be present with us now. Thank you for your prayers, Michael and Helen. We're going to turn now to our first Bible reading. Our reading is Psalm 31. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ears to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me. A strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden from me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. You hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will exalt and rejoice in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction and have taken heed of my adversities and have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy you have set my feet in a broad place be gracious to me O Lord for I am in distress my eyes waste away from grief my soul and body also for my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbours, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of the mind like one who is dead, I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many terror all around. As they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant, save me in your steadfast love. O oh, do not let me be put to shame, O oh Lord, for I call on you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go dumbfounded to shoal. Let the lying lips be still, that they speak instantly against the righteous with pride and content. Oh, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplished for those who take refuge in you in the sight of everyone. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter from continuous tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was beset as a city under siege. 
I had said in my alarm, I am driven far from your sight, but you heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. Love the Lord, all his saints. The Lord preserve the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts haughtily. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Now we're going to hear from Dave Thomas, who is going to give a short talk aimed at the younger members of our church family. Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me. Oh, hi there. I feel like I'm washing my hands all the time at the moment. It used to be the case that I would remind my daughters to wash their hands, but now I feel like they're the ones reminding me. But it is good to wash our hands, isn't it? It helps to protect us from getting ill and it helps to protect other people. And it's really easy for me because I've got a tap here in my sink. I've got um, plenty of soap to use as well. But all this hand washing reminds me of some of the people that I've met around the world with Christian aid. For some of them, it's much harder to get water to wash their hands. I was in Kenya, a country in Eastern Africa, and in parts of Kenya, it can be really, really dry for many months of the year. I went to a primary school called Kavangoni Primary School, where Christian aid had been helping people. In that primary school, most of the children had no taps at home, no source of water for washing their hands, and even at school, there were no taps. So imagine how difficult it was for them to keep their hands clean and to prevent germs from spreading. The primary school principal told us that many of the children took days off because they were sick. So Christian Aid helped, and what they did was they gave the school water tanks with taps and soap so that they could wash their hands. They also taught them songs so that the children would know how important it was to keep their hands clean. And the primary school principal told us that because of that help, the children weren't taking as many days off school as they used to. So that was really good news. And I know that some children here have also been learning to wash their hands while singing songs. Some people have been singing happy birthday twice to remind them to wash their hands really, really thoroughly. And so I want to suggest something else that you can do whilst you're washing your hands to remind you to wash them really, really thoroughly. Whilst you wash your hands, you can say a prayer and you can use your fingers to remind you of who to pray for. So firstly, as you wash your thumb, pray for those closest to you, like your family and friends. Secondly, as you wash your pointing finger, pray for those who look after us. Thirdly, as you wash your tallest finger, pray for those in charge who are making difficult decisions. And fourthly, as you wash your ring finger, which is the weakest finger, pray for those who are particularly in need. And then fifthly, as you wash your little finger, pray for yourself. And then last, as you wash the palm of your hand, thank God that he holds the whole world in his hands. So let's try it now. Lord, please protect my family and friends. Lord, bless the doctors and nurses and pharmacists and others working hard to keep us safe. Lord, give wisdom to those in charge. Help them to make the right decisions. Lord, be with those who already find it hard to get clean water in places like Kenya. Lord, help me to stay safe and to love others as you love me. Lord, thank you that the whole world is in your hands. Please help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. And then you can pray whilst washing the other hand. So next time you wash your hands, please remember people around the world who find it much harder to get clean, safe water. And pray for Christian aid as we try to help everyone stay safe. Thank you, Dave. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8. And I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonour others. 
It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And now we are really pleased that the chair of the Christian Aid Ireland Board, Reverend Liz Hughes, is going to come and share with us. I'm Liz Hughes and I'm chair of Christian Aid Ireland. And I'm so glad to be able to use this opportunity to say thank you to all of you who so generously support Christian Aid in good times and tough times. Those of you who pray, who campaign, who fundraise, who volunteer, who collect and who give. In January, I had the privilege of visiting Sierra Leone and seeing at first hand the work of Christian Aid and our partners. On the Saturday of our visit, there was a civic function in the district of Kono and all sorts of dignitaries were invited, all paying tribute to the impact our partners were making in sustainable development in the local area. As we were being formally greeted as guests, the Paramount Chief, who is a Muslim, took time to express thanks specifically to the churches in Ireland for their support of the work of Christian Aid, which was benefiting the whole community. The next morning, we were worshipping in the Assemblies of God congregation in Kono, and the pastor took time to express thanks to the churches in Ireland for all their support of Christian aid. And he went on to list the very positive changes that had taken place as a result of our partner's work throughout the district. Their church building had been destroyed by fire during the Civil War and their congregation was again devastated during the Ebola crisis. In fact, they had three offerings taken up that morning in the midst of much enthusiastic praising the Lord and with lots of singing and dancing. One of the offerings was a regular one for the general work of the church. One was given by those in business who could afford to tithe. And one was called the Compassion Offering, which is, was especially for those who had been bereaved during the Ebola crisis. Christian Aid's country manager, Jeanne Camara, told us how the deepest anguish in that crisis was not only the horror of the disease itself, but the inability to give your loved one the familiar burial rites of custom and culture. Not being able to touch the body of a child or a parent was the hardest of all. We visited the Interreligious Council, who shared how as faith leaders, they gathered their people in churches and mosques all over the country and told them how important the laws of hygiene and infection control were. But more than that, in the worst of circumstances, they were there to show how even when the usual customs could not be followed, burials could be conducted in the safe and dignified way. Christian Aid Sierra Leone had an important role in bringing the faith leaders together and mobilising them into action. It was a story of love and compassion and turning faith into action in caring for neighbour at every turn. Little did we know then, as we listened to the stories of those toughest of times, that our own part of the world would be turned upside down by an equally devastating infectious disease. At any time of crisis, Christians find comfort in the words of scripture. The Psalms in particular, so often reflect the personal struggles and fears, questions and doubts, tough times and joyful celebrations which echo in our minds. It might be the words of reassurance from Psalm 23, the shepherd, who cares for his flock, even in the dangers of the deepest valley. Or Psalm 46, the God who is a refuge and a strength and a very present help in time of trouble. 
or the heartfelt prayer of Psalm 57, where the psalm writer says to God, I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. One of the lectionary readings for Christian Aid Week just happens to be Psalm 31, which is written by someone who is clearly feeling very poorly because of some form of illness or disease. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Even in the face of serious illness, the psalm writer places his trust in God. Into your hands I commit my spirit. The words which Jesus himself repeated on the cross. Later in the psalm, the phrase reappears. In you, I take refuge. My times are in your hands. One of the deepest poignancies of this coronavirus has not been a being able to be present to hold the hands of someone dear to us who is ill. There is something profoundly significant about knowing that we can trust ourselves and those whom we love into God's hands in the darkest of times. In Sierra Leone, we visited the village of Bayama, part of the Health Legacy Programme highlighted in last year's Christian Aid Week. I was deeply touched as we walked around that village. We listened to their pride in making plate racks. Outside every mud brick hut, there was a kind of rack made from wooden pieces, constructed so as they could lift the dishes off the ground to keep them clean and hygienic. The simplest of projects, but making such a difference. Thanks to the health programme, the villagers were discovering what their rights were, how they could call their health authorities to account, how they could keep careful track of the drugs assigned to their very basic health clinic. We met Jebby and Nurse Judith, who had travelled from a nearby village. Those of you involved in Christian Aid Week last year will remember Jebby's story. Jebby herself is so small and tiny. She told us how she had lost two babies before, but now with improved facilities, her baby had been born healthy. We saw the health clinic in Bayama, the most basic of accommodation. One woman was looking very ill on a drip in the corner of the room. Children and adults crowded into the waiting room. I can't begin to imagine the devastation that another highly contagious disease might impact that village. We have found our health services here to be seriously stretched at times and short of equipment during this pandemic. I dread to think how the disease would spread to Bayama and its surrounding villages. At the same time, we also saw the hand washing techniques in almost every village where during the Ebola crisis people were shown basic rules of hygiene and we came across many ingenious devices for delivering a relatively small amount of water into our hands for washing. Christian Aid Sierra Leone will have many challenges as they seek to combat this new disease but they will also have lessons to teach other developing countries. And Christian Aid will build on these as we seek to protect vulnerable communities, those on the margins, those who will be most at risk. The psalm writer, even in the worst of moments, speaks of God's unfailing love. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. God's unfailing love is a theme taken up throughout the Bible culminating in the familiar passage from 1 Corinthians 13 on the nature of love, where we are reminded that love never fails. There is nothing love cannot face. There is no limit to its faith, its hope, its endurance. Love will never come to an end. At present, we see only puzzling reflections in a mirror, but one day we shall see face to face. Love never fails. I thank God today that whatever happens, I can place my life in his hands with confidence. 
I can experience something of the unfailing love which took Jesus to the cross. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. I thank God for all the people who've been showing love to neighbour during this crisis, who've been caring on the front line, who've been volunteering, who've been praying. But my heart goes out to those parts of the world like Sierra Leone, ravaged by civil war, then by Ebola, and now facing the dangers of COVID-19 with limited resources, fragile health services and low immunity. Those places where people can't stay home because they only have food supplies to survive from day to day. Those places where life is precarious enough without this new pandemic threat. They so much need our prayers. Love never fails. This year's Christian Aid Week theme. We are challenging people to think of one expense that they have actually managed to save during lockdown. Maybe that's a tank of petrol or a night in the town or the regular visit to the hairdresser or the golf club. And to set aside the equivalent to donate. I'm really missing being able to go out for breakfast to a coffee shop or somewhere like that with family or friends pretty well every other week. It's just about my favourite thing to do. So I'm giving the equivalent of that to the Christian Aid Week appeal. It's only a gesture, but it's one way of making up for the fact that we can't do the usual door-to-door -door collections or fundraising events in these circumstances. Love never fails. God's love never fails. No matter what, our times are in God's hands. We are in God's hands. No better place to take refuge. Coronavirus impacts all of us, but God's love unites us all. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Even in the darkest moments, love gives hope. Love compels us to stand together in solidarity with our neighbours near and far. Love compels us to fight against coronavirus alongside our sisters and brothers living in poverty. Love compels us to stand together in prayer with our neighbours near and far. Love compels us to give and act as one. Amen. Loving God is still in our shaking soul, the belief and hope that all things are possible with your creative love. For strangers to become friends, for science to find solutions, for resources to be shared generously so everyone, everywhere can have what they need, for perfect love that knows no borders, to cast out any fear and selfishness that divides. May your love that never ends be our comfort, strength and guide for the well-being of all and the glory of God. God, in your mercy, hear all our prayers. Amen. Loving God, strengthen our innermost being with your love that bears all things, even the weight of this global pandemic, with your love that endures all things, even the long haul of watching for symptoms, of patiently waiting for this to pass, watching and waiting, keeping our gaze fixed on you and looking out for our neighbors near and far. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Thank you to Liz Hughes and to our international staff for sharing with us. And thank you for joining us in our worship. We hope and pray that you and those you love are keeping safe and knowing God's presence at this strange time. We hope you've enjoyed our service and we are so grateful for your continued support of Christian Aid. If you have been inspired to respond, you can do so in a few ways. Please keep praying for us and for the communities that we work in around the world.
If you'd like to support financially, you can do that in a couple of ways. Firstly, you could give through a church collection and you can do that at caweek.ie forward slash church collection or you could set up a monthly donation at caweek.ie forward slash regular gift. Monthly giving allows us to plan ahead. It gives us certainty and it helps us to respond where the need is greatest. Again, thank you so much for joining us. As we go offline, let's pray together. May the presence of the Creator refresh you. May the comfort of the Son renew you. May the inspiration of the Spirit restore you. To be love in action, even from a distance, in our neighbourhoods near and far, from this day and forevermore. Amen.